Hi everybody, Joe Grisappa here. Thank you for tuning into my channel and watching my video. This is another video game mail call video, and today is going to be an assortment of things, including one more limited run package that I got yesterday, um, a number of Play Asia packages, and some random things that I'm really excited about and maybe you haven't seen before. Let's jump right in. Um, in my last video, I mentioned to you that I recently uh, fractured my ankle and ruptured my Achilles tendon on my left foot. Today I went to physical therapy for the fourth time and making really good progress. Uh, I was able to do 100 pounds on the leg press machine with both legs and, uh, and 40 pounds with my injured leg. Um, we we're being very cautious at first. Uh, next week I have a follow-up with the surgeon to see where we stand and see if I can stop wearing the boot. Um, limited run. This is five dates. And call me a sucker, but I bought three copies because it is, it was limited. It was not an open pre-order. Ooh, I got a gold card that is off center. That's a bummer. Gold cards are kind of cool to get. Um, some people laugh at these movie type games and I buy them because I'm a filmmaker and an actor and I would love to be a part of somebody's uh, video game that's done in this style as an actor or a writer or even director. These were, when I was a teenager, Dragon's Lair was a big deal and these are kind of the same thing. Um, I liked, I love that the laser disc style games are coming back. Anyway, five dates. I know nothing about it. Hopefully it's fun. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! It's Baxter and Fraggle. So, limited run. Right there. Let's go to Play Asia. I got three Play Asia boxes. And I only buy the Play Asia limited edition exclusives. I do not buy any other games from them with a couple of exceptions. I think I bought Battle Princess Madeline and uh, Raiden from them a while back. Other than that, I stick to the collector's editions, the exclusives, and primarily Vita and PS4, occasionally a Switch. But I am going for a complete run of PlayAsia Vita and PS4, although I missed the last couple of Vita. And what do we have here? Yumatsatsu, forgive my pronunciation, Remaster and Reafter. One of each. Know nothing about them, but to have a whole set, you've got to have these two. Probably will never play these two, but sometimes the completionist in me wins the battle. And they get you get a sticker with them, you get a mask, face mask holder and another sticker. I don't do anything with these. I'll probably give them away. Play Asia box number two. Oh, one thing I meant to mention in the other video, speaking of current events in my life, a couple of years ago, my friend Marcus Vasquez called me up and said he was gonna make a Batman fan film and he wanted me to play the Joker. And without hesitation, I said yes. Well, we did it, and he finished it and premiered it on July 31st. And I was quite proud of what we all accomplished, especially what he did as the director and playing Batman and doing all the visual effects himself. Tell you what, I'm gonna stop right here and show you a clip, okay? Hold on. What I'm doing up here is serious business. Comedy ain't no joke. 
I'm not really that bad of a guy. That's why I'm going to let one of you live. But it's going to be up to you to determine who that's going to be. Well, there's a taste of the bat last laugh, which hopefully will be on YouTube very soon. He hasn't put it on YouTube yet. He has a couple of tweaks to make before calling it completely permanently finished. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. Okay, here's Play Asia box number two. Sticker, sticker, mask holder. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all those. Don't think anyone's gonna want those. All right. I bought two copies of Sense on Twitch. I missed the Vita version, regretfully, and had to pay, what, $160 to get that? Because there were so few. I think they only did 600 Vita. I think they did 2,000 of the Switch. There you go. One to keep sealed. One to open and play, should I choose to. There you go. I'm excited about that one. Play Asia box number three for this video. Got a little ding here. That's very aggravating. Play Asia's, they're good about handling damaged goods when they arrive damaged, but they pack so lightly. These did not get damaged. But just like the comment I made in my last video about limited run putting something the exact size of the box inside the box, Play Asia does that every time and you think they would pack it just a little bit better because it's going overseas. But on the other hand, I know a slightly bigger package could cost a lot more in shipping. So Play Asia gets a pass because it's overseas and they got to do things as inexpensively as possible. But still, these are limited edition collector's items. They know they're selling to collectors. Very few people open this collector's edition stuff from Play Asia. I did once. I've opened a couple. Um, regretfully, one of them was Cursed Castilla before I decided to look it up and see the value. I didn't think people were collecting Play Asia at the time I bought it to play. I opened it and I played it. I loved the game, but then I realized opening it probably cost me $100 at the time. I could have sold it for, what, $200 and downloaded it for $30. I don't know what the price of that one is now. Oh, these. One of these I'm very excited about. Bought two copies of Horizon Chase Turbo, which looks like it's outrun if you remember OutRun from the late 80s. Some driving games can be really good. I love throwback driving games. All right. And I was very excited to see this. Didn't know anything about it, but it looks like it's right up my alley as far as gameplay goes. Lux Slinger. A Fistful of Fortune. Same thing. I got number 933 and 413. I'm pretty sure one of these is going to get opened and played, or I might download it, but I was very excited when I saw this game because it just, this just looks like it's right up my alley and I can't explain it to you so I won't just look it up um, throwback style platformer I think um, gosh I don't even know what to compare it to Iron Horse arcade game maybe anyway I'm looking forward to that all right play Asia is out of the way now I've got some interesting stuff I may split this one into a third video but let's see what the most uh, impressive, the most fun might be here. Here's a special reserve. This is I Am 8-Bit. This is Pixel Ripped. 
don't think that's gonna be that great. That was a FOMO thing. And I don't think it sold very well or very fast. Uh, let's look at oh, which one, where is it? This is super rare. Oh, they're over there. One second. Uh oh. I'm moving slow. I'm still in the boot. This is what I'm going to jump to right now. I've been sitting on this one a while. January, for, January, February, March, April. Uh, this came in April. I didn't open it because I wanted to save it for a video. It's old news now if you follow Atari 2600 homebrews. If you do not follow Atari homebrews, this is quite fun. Audacity Games. Ooh, free gift enclosed. Let's look at that in a second. Circus Convoy. From two of the original Activision programmers that did uh, Keystone Capers and Pitfall, I believe. Look at that. Oh, they sealed it. Circus Convoy. If you are familiar with Atari Activision games, you know they were probably the best games on the system. They far outshined anything Atari made themselves. Did they put their names on it? I sure hope they did, because that's why... I believe that's why these programmers left Atari in the first place. Gary Kitchen, David Crane, yep. Two of the founding members of Activision. Atari didn't want to give them credit. So I believe that's why they left and started their own company so all the programmers that worked for them would get credit for their games. Pretty great move. I'm excited about that. Very excited. And let's open this other Atari box here. How many minutes in are we? 13. Yeah, I can't wait any longer for this one. This was back in July. These were ordered, I think, back in November of 2020 after many months of anticipation, maybe even a year for one of them. One of these games in here is a homebrew of one of my favorite all-time favorite arcade games. Hope my dogs don't eat these peanuts. Baxter will eat these. Look, it's right on top. Can you see it? Can you see it through the styrofoam, not styrofoam, the bubble wrap? Albert at Atari Age packs things really well. I've never received a damaged item from him, and I'm pretty sure he would replace anything that got damaged. He's a good guy. Plus, I think it's insured. Unlike Limited Run, who does not insure their packages. Zookeeper. Quite a feat for the Atari 2600. Can you see that without reflection? Look at that. Zookeeper, Champ Games. If you know this game, you know how incredibly difficult it probably was to convert to Atari 2600 or program it on the 2600. Hey, buddy, don't eat that. See, I knew it. Come here, come here. This is Baxter. He eats styrofoam peanuts, certain kind. Doesn't seem to bother him at all. Okay, buddy, don't eat that. So I may wrap this video up so he doesn't eat anymore. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, Zookeeper. And two more here. Daredevil and Avalanche. 
Ooh, I gotta order tire tracks before he stops making boxes. Yeah, he packed these real well. Get a Tari H sticker and a little flyer about what's coming up. I think I've already got those games Galaga, Wizard of War, Aardvark. But man, these are some great throwback boxes when they make a game in the style of Activision. Now, this is Daredevil is not from an Activision programmer, but it looks like an Activision style game, and the box, of course done in that style too for that reason daredevil and lastly for this atari age order avalanche kaboom is one of the best games on the atari 2600 avalanche is the arcade game that kaboom is based on and somebody finally did a version of it for the atari and it's champ games same programmers of Galagon, the Galaga clone, and Zookeeper. I was thrilled to see someone actually took the time to make an Avalanche game. I, I remember as a kid, I did see it at one place, Avalanche. Okay. Baxter, look at you. Yep, he's eating the peanuts. All right. I'm going to wrap this video up, probably do one more video this evening to finish off this bit here. But let's look at the uh, Circus Convoy bonus items real quick. Thank you for your support letter. Oh, a patch. Remember Activision was real big on sending you a patch if you beat a certain score and sent them a photograph in the mail. So they, did, they follow that pattern, it's awesome. What else is in here? That's it. I could have bought the collector's edition. I think it was limited to 2000. I'm not sure it was, but it was more expensive. And it may still, if it's still available. And so I really want to play that game. I'm Joe Grisafi. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check back very soon for one more video opening the rest of this stuff. Here's what we have left. Um, I don't know what company that is. This is Pixel Heart, Pixel Ripped. What's in the big box here? Special Reserve, there was another Special Reserve. This is Super Rare and a couple more fun things. I got a couple of things over there. I'll make a, one more video and open it all. All right, thanks for watching guys. Check back soon. I appreciate your time. Bye.